This video is about amino acids. Amino acids uh, is part of the 3.3.13 AQA syllabus. And what we're going to do is going to do a kind of intro into amino acids to help out with your understanding of DNA and proteins, etc. coming up. So we're going to look at a number of factors today. Structure of the amino acids, naming amino acids, uh, sphere to ions, acid-base properties of amino acids, and amino acids forming polymers. So to begin with, the structure of a, an amino acid it has a central carbon. Uh, it has um, the amino group, as you can see there. There's a carboxylic acid group. So that's always the same in amino acids. They always have that structure. And then there's this R group here. And this R group can vary um, from structure to structure, amino acid, and we'll see that in three examples below. So, looking at glycine, leucine, serine. So, um, the glycine amino acid has got a, a hydrogen group here, so it's the simplest of the amino acids. So it has the amino group, as you'd expect, and the carboxylic acid. So its common name is glycine. Its IUPAC name is 2-amino ethanoic acid. So you find the longest carbon chain. You start the carboxylic acid, so it's two carbons long. There's an amino group in two positions, so it's 2 amino ethanoic acid. Leucine is next. A uh, bit more complex, this one. But again, you find the longest chain, so it's four carbons long. Um, and then we can see the uh, amino group in the two position. And there's a methyl group in the three position. So it comes to 2 amino, 3 methyl butanoic acid. Uh, serine is the last one we're going to look at today. Um, and we can get find the longest chain, so it's three carbons long. We can see amino group in the two position, and so it's called two amino, three hydroxy, propanoic acid. Briefly, you're going to talk to you about how amino acids show acid-base properties. Just applying what you know about the amino groups and ammonia and carboxylic acids, we can see that. Uh, if we take, say, a glycine, and I simplified it, so the A here is the CH2COH. So if we add an acid, an acid to this um, structure, this amino acid, we'll end up having uh, A, N, NH3 plus. And the reason for that is that the um, N, the lone pair is on the N, and so we can see that see the lone pair on the N, very small there, but we can see the lone pair on the N picks up the proton, so it accepts the proton, so the amino acid is a base in this, in this circumstance. In the other case, we see that the hydroxide can react with the carboxylic acid group here, and it's going to remove this proton, and so what we end up with here is uh, the other end of the molecule, is H O C O and this um, is removed so that turns into a minus That's a, that turns into a minus and then we've got the A, a group here and water is the other product so there's our base There's our base, there's the H reacting with, and it makes water. And we kind of made this carboxylic group. On the other hand, we have this ammonium group. Next, we're going to look at sphitter ions. Sphitter ions are, are um, a structure of the amino acids where the uh, hydrogen has been transferred over to the ammonia, so the amine functional group. So they naturally occur, and this is the common state of amino acids in their solid form when, when they've been separated. Um, and this leads to some properties, physical properties, which are different to a simple molecule of their size. They have very high melting points compared to other simple molecules of their size because they are ionic. And they are also very soluble compared to non-polar solvents such as ethers because they are ionic so they interact very easily with water. 
Spit ions um, behave in a similar way to amino acids in that they can pick up protons and can react with alkalis. So in the circumstance here we see that um, the if we have a spit ion, and again I've simplified it so that this A group here is this, this part of the molecule here. So it can pick up a proton here and it could become H and then O and then the carboxylic acid and then the A group there. So it's 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 collected the proton. On the other hand, the ammonium end of the molecule, so here, it can react with the hydroxide and so it can lose a proton, so it turns up to be this, so A, NH2, lost a proton, plus water as a byproduct. There's just a few terms in terms of um, the uh, biological terms of molecules. So dipeptides is where two amino acids join together. Polypeptides is many amino acids join together. For example, up to 50 amino acids join together. And a protein is many, i.e. over 50 amino acids. There's just a ballpark region for those figures. Now, how do they join together? So this is an important understanding of of polymerization and how amino acids join together in the first place. So what we have is a um, amino group here, and this amino group has a lone pair on it. So the lone pair is attracted to a delta plus carbon, which is here. This is delta plus, this is delta minus. And so there's a nucleophilic attack, really. And the result of that is that the phi circle the um, OH here and H they are lost to make water and then the atoms I'm going to put in red they join together to make this functional group and this is an amide functional group amide or peptide linkage and it's, so it's an amide linkage or peptide linkage and it's it, it occurs when two amino acids join together. It's a condensation reaction because uh, you can see that the water has been um, formed here. Um, so the water has been, been formed there. And so that's the byproduct of the reaction. On this last uh, slide here, we're going to look at um, how further reactions of the dipepti dipeptides can take place. Um, so if we if we take uh, say two amino acids that have been joined together, so you can see there's uh, two amino acids here. So there's there's one of them, and there's the other one, and you can see the amide linkage, which is uh, around here. There's the amide linkage. What of course can happen is because there's an amino group here, uh, it has the it has the ability to react with another carboxylic acid and, and react with a carbon here. And on the amino group, it could react with the other end of this dipeptide. So in the same way, we can we could predict then, and it does it does happen, of course, that the reactions occur and there's a longer length polymer. And so the product of the reaction is that first of all we have a, a new link here um, uh, and a new link there here, and what we've lost from the molecule is um, so there's these uh, OH and H's will form a mole of water. And one of the H's here and an OH there would form a mole of water. And so we're left with this new um, amide linkage or peptide linkage here and here and two moles of water as the byproduct of that reaction. And that could occur further because we have we have another carboxylic acid here and another amine there so here could react with the, another carboxylic acid and this molecule could react with another uh, amine group of another amino acid and so on and so on so we can make a, pe uh, a protein from that last thing we'll look at in this intro of amino acids we're going to look at uh, hydrolysis of peptide links which is the opposite of condensation um, to do that you add water and you break apart the functional group uh, of the molecule, which can be found 
here, so the amide linkage is broken, and so you can see that the OH of this water molecule is added to this carbon, and the H of this water molecule is added to the N. And so this bond is broken, so it's height called hydrolysis, and we're breaking a covalent bond by the addition of water, that is hydrolysis. There are two conditions. You can have very harsh, slow conditions, heat and reflux, um, 24 hours of refluxing and concentrated HCl, 6 molar. Or you can, a quicker method, 30 minutes, sealed tube with nitrogen, concentrated HCl, and you can actually heat that into a microwave, and it would do the same thing. The purpose of that will be to analyse the amino acids present, as you could then analyse through chromatography, which is something else you'll learn about later in this course.